Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Just showing off one of my new kits. Uh, I'm going to actually show you how to put one together in a minute, but first I'm going to give you a demonstration. Uh, this is the main board. It is a uh, little uh, DIY security system. I'm also going to put it together so it's compatible for airsoft slash paintball games. Um, it comes with a 9 volt adapter that's plugged in right now, a 9 volt 1 amp adapter. Uh, but it is battery compatible, a 9 volt battery, a good one will drive this. Anyway, so what it is is you've got a reed switch right here connected to the main board magnet. You can secure the magnet and the main board to the uh, to a door via um, double-sided tape on the back, or you can take the double-sided off tape tape off, and you can use the mounting holes. There's mounting holes in both the reed switch and the magnet. Anyway, so after you plug it in, we're actually I'll show you what happens when I plug it in. Plugging it in, applying power. LED turns uh, turns on and off just to show you the power has been applied. Then it waits for you to press the button. Now, if you have the door closed when you press the button, it'll it'll automatically go into scanning mode after the LED turns off and on and off a couple times. But if the door is not closed, like right now, uh, what'll happen is um, the LED will start to flicker, and it will continue to do that until you close the door and this magnet activates the reed switch. So what I'll do is I will. Simulate closing the door. As you notice, notice that the the uh, LED is turned off. So as soon as I open the door, what happens is that LED is going to blink 20 times. In that uh, in that duration, I can press the cell button to deactivate it, or I can let the 20 uh, flashes elapse. It takes about eight seconds, and the siren will go off. And the siren is really really loud. So let's do it. Now to turn it off, I just press the button. So, it's more of a novelty, it's fun, it's got four mounting holes. Uh, by the time that goes off, even if someone knows to where, where to find it and press the button, the damage has already been done. This is so loud, you can hear it well outside of, of your house very very loud. The siren it comes with has two mounting holes. Uh, again, I'll, when I put it together I'll show you how you can uh, wire a 9 volt battery to this. So let me just simulate again. Uh, after it resets the LED blinks again saying it's ready to for the button press. So I'll simulate turning it on with the door closed. It'll flash a couple times. It'll go directly into scanning mode. Now we've got 20 uh, it's, it's scanning, it's, it's counting down again so I'll just press the button and it'll go back into uh, ready mode. And so, again, nothing will happen until I press the button again. And it will wait and keep blinking until I've closed the door. So, again, 20 flashes, around 8 seconds. And then the alarm will go off. And it is really loud. Not loud when you cover it up, but... Anyway, it's a fun little it's a fun little uh, kit to put together. I'll also be offering these assembled. Uh, for those of you who are crazy about airsoft and paintball, you could easily rig this up in one of uh, one of your intricate. Uh, um, I know that a lot a lot of paintball indoor paintball arenas and even outdoor paintball arenas have like shacks and buildings that uh, you could easily rig this up to, especially with the double sided tape. But uh, Again, this is really a, it's just a fun little thing to put together. It doesn't take long. So what I'll do is right now I'll show you the kit. Okay, you got your 9 volt 1 amp adapter right here. Uh, loud siren, two mounting holes, a uh, program microcontroller and dip socket, dip 8 socket, 5 volt relay, uh, optional uh, DC power jack, 5 millimeter, uh, momentary push switch, 7805 5 volt regulator, 2N2222 NPN transistor, a single 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, 2 pin terminal block, 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, uh, 3 millimeter red LED, a 47 K ohm resistor, a 10 K ohm resistor, a 1 K ohm resistor, a 470 ohm resistor, a diode, a magnet mountable for the reed switch. Oops, derp. Uh, your reed switch module right here that solders to the board via the cable and your custom PCB. So first of all, let's talk about the resistors. So there's one little thing on the board that I had to change after the PCB fab had come through and that is R4. 
R4 labeled R410K is actually your single 1K ohm resistor. That, so place your your 1K ohm resistor in the 10K slot for R4. R410K, make sure you place your single 1K ohm resistor there. R2 is labeled R247K, place your single 47K resistor there. Uh, R3 is labeled R3470R, uh, place your single 470 ohm resistor here. Uh, and R5 right here, uh, is labeled R5 10K. Place your single 10K ohm resistor there. As long as you have the the, or the values in the right places, no problem. Next, we're going to do our LED, our diode, and our capacitors. We're actually going to fit the transistor into this step. The transistor, the 2N2222 NPN transistor, has a flat side and a curved side. The flat side on the front has little writing on it, uh, and the curved side obviously is curved, and so it's tilting around. Uh, and that goes in the T1 slot, T labeled T1, 2N, uh, 2365. Now I changed the uh, I changed the transistor from the 2, uh, 2N6835 to the 2N2222, uh, my preferred transistor for driving relays. So uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the board, the footprint, there is a flat side on the bottom here from this perspective and a curved side of the footprint. Make sure that from a bird's eye view, when you place the transistor in, that the flat side of the transistor is facing the flat side of the footprint, and that the curved side of the transistor is facing the curved side of the footprint. Pretty straightforward. If you turn that around, it will not drive your relay, and your siren will not turn on. Now, your capa your uh, your first capacitor, uh, your ceramic capacitor, is goes in the C2 slot, labeled C2 0.1U for 0.1 microfarad, and it is not polarized. Um, it can fit in either way as long as it goes in that slot. Your 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor goes in the C1 slot labeled uh, C1-100U for 100 micro. Now, in this case, the uh, positive is on the right. There's a little plus sign on the, in the right hole from this perspective. Uh, the electrolytic capacitor has a long lead and a short lead. Uh, long lead positive, short lead negative. Place your long lead on the right and your short lead on the left. If you turn that around, uh, you'll blow up the capacitor when you turn it on, so be careful. You don't want to reverse the polarity there. Long lead on the right with a little plus sign, short lead on the left. Your LED has a short lead and a long lead too. Uh, long lead positive, short lead negative, or long lead anode, short lead cathode. Your, uh, and that goes in the indicate slot. This is LED indicate. So, uh, short lead goes on the right, negative goes on the right. Uh, facing the actual uh, indicate footprint, and your long lead positive goes on the left. If you reverse that, you won't harm your circuit, but your indicator will not work, and you'll have no idea what's going on because you rely on that visual indicator to uh, follow along with ha where the program is. Lastly, your power diode. Your diode goes in the D1 slot labeled 1N4004 D1. On the footprint on the right-hand side from this perspective, there's a white stripe. On the diode, on one side, there's a white stripe, and that is the negative side. Make sure that from a bird's eye view, you make sure that the white stripe on the diode is facing the stripe on the footprint, which in this case is on the right pin of the D1 slot. The other side of the diode has a, is just black, and that will face that will go in the left pin from this perspective. Don't turn that around, or else you'll have you'll cause a reset whenever the relay turns on. It'll cause a direct short circuit, and it'll cause a reset. So be very very careful. Now once you've done that, we're going to take a, a big step. We're going to do the socket, the uh, terminal block, the button, and the uh, the power uh, port. First of all, let's do the power port, the DC uh, power connector. Now, if you want to solder in another power, power supply, you don't want to use your 9-volt adapter. What you can do is solder your DC ground wire here. It can be, uh, it can be anywhere from uh, 8 to 12 volts. And, uh, sorry, that's your, yeah, that's your ground and this is your positive on the top here. This button on the right is not used. So the actual square pad, ground, top pad, uh, DC plus, and your right pin is unused. So if you want to add a 9-volt adapter there, you can, or a couple 9-volt adapters to put a couple 9-volt uh, batteries in parallel. Anyway, the uh, adapter really only fits in one way. So solder it into place. You don't have to go overboard on the soldering. Just make sure that the joints are connected. Uh, if you apply way too much heat for too long, you'll melt, you'll melt it, and it will be useless. So be very careful about that. 
the button goes in the S1 slot. It really only fits in one way. Line up the holes, pop it into place, make sure that it's flush to the board. The uh, two-pin terminal block goes right here, for, uh, and uh, there's two sides to the terminal block. There's a terminal side and there's a plastic side. Make sure that the terminals are facing outwards so that you can wire in your siren from here. So you, if you wire it in backwards, you're not going to be able to get your, your wires in behind the relay. Um, lastly, for the step, the socket goes in the uh, PIC 10F slot right here. You'll notice, you might not be able to see it very well from there, but there's a notch on the left-hand side of the footprint. There is a notch on the left-hand side of the socket. There is a notch on the left-hand side of the microcontroller. Make sure that from a bird's eye view, they all line up. So solder your socket in with the notch facing left from this perspective. Once it's soldered in, no shorts, flush to the board. Uh, put your chip in it, and the chip again will has the notch on the left. All of those notches from a bird's eye view are supposed to to uh, to uh, align. If they do not, you're gonna and you power it up, you're gonna power uh, your chip backwards, and you're gonna fry it immediately. So after you solder those into place, we'll do our 7805. We will do our 5 volt relay, and we will do our read switch, and then we'll test it. The 7805 has a black side with writing on it, that's the front side, and it has a, bla uh, a back side which is essentially ground. It looks grayish white. The footprint right here, labeled 7805, has a white stripe on the back. That's your ground side. So make sure that your black side with writing on it is facing the uh, DC connector, like so. And that the ground side is facing your capacitor. Uh, if you turn that around, it will not regulate to 5 volts and you might damage your circuitry. You cer it certainly will not at w work adequately, so make sure black side facing the DC connector. Your relay, very easy. It's got three pins on one side, two on the back. Uh, there's three pins on one side of the footprint, two on the back. Uh, so put, it, put it in, make sure that it's flush to the board. Healthy amount of solder on each pad. Uh, and now the, the reed switch. Reed switch has two wires. Uh, make sure that... Uh, both wires are even, so if you have to cut some off, that's fine. Just make sure that they're even. And what you can do is, it doesn't matter which orientation, there's no polarity. They go in the reed pads. So solder one wire to the left reed pad, or the top reed pad, and one to the bottom. Make sure there are no shorts. And once you're done that, we can run a test. Now for our test, we're not going to plug in the siren because it's loud and obnoxious. So what you need to know is on the terminal block, there's... Uh, two pins labeled SIR plus on the top, SIR minus on the bottom for siren plus, siren minus. minus. The siren has uh, two wires, uh, a black and a red. The red wire goes in the SIR plus terminal block. Screw it down with your screwdriver, uh, or tighten it with your screwdriver rather. Your SIR minus, place the black wire in. Now you might find some of these sirens have uh, a red wire and a wire that is a combination of red and black. The, anything, the wire with any black on it goes in your negative slot. So, what I've got here is I've got the uh, I've got the uh, reed switch and the magnet that comes with it. Of course, there is the uh, you can take the double-sided tape off if you want and mount it with uh, two screws. And uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. And we're going to run a test. Now, if we hear the relay click, we know everything's working. So, when you first test it, what you have to look for is the LED. LED come on. LED comes on. Press the cell button. The cell button works. So, right now, it's searching for that magnet. Okay, so now it's, uh, the door is closed. Open up the door. Listen for the relay. Relay works. System works. All is well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. You'll be able to find this kit at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. We'll also have it in assembled form. Take care and have a great day, everyone.